Greenwood East. This is our anniversary service. So today, Ringwood has been running for 42 years. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> of course, the city has been running for over 49 years. <laughs> so we do pale a small bit in comparison, but we're very proud of that achievement. So I do thank you for coming in here today to celebrate it with us. I'm also going to say to you, first of all, let me introduce myself to you if you don't know me. So my name is Carol Crawford Kerr and I'm the President here and the Minister at Ringwood East. So it is a pleasure to welcome you all here today. And now I will also ask, is anyone here at a spiritualist church or an organisation for the very first time? Are we any complete newcomers? Wow. Well, we do. Okay. So we welcome you. Okay. And we hope you enjoy the afternoon with us today. And, um, you know, if you have any questions, we have all of our beautiful committee members. And if you would like to know anything, please ask them. They'll only be too happy to guide you to where you can get the right answers. Okay. And of course, to all of our returning friends, it's always lovely to see you all here to share another afternoon of working with spirit. As I said, it's a very special day today. It's our service for our anniversary. So today, I thought there would be no one better to actually be here today to talk to you than a past president and minister of Ringwood East. This is a gentleman who spent from 1996 to 2011 standing very proudly in that role. So it is with a great deal of pleasure and honor, an honor to welcome Dom Reverend Dominic Listro to our platform today. Dominic was that beautiful, friendly face at the door when I used to come and be a platform presenter who used to welcome me in. So it's lovely to welcome him back to his church. And of course, the President and the Minister of the Victorian Spiritualist Union. It is a, indeed a very big pleasure to welcome the Reverend Lorraine Latet. <laughs> And of course, we cannot forget our music lady. Sure. She takes this challenge with such joy and pride. Please welcome Zelma Rasmus. <laughs> and I'm now going to hand it over to the Reverend Dominic Mistro. <coughs> Please join with me. Thank you, Carol fellow platform workers, ladies and gentlemen. I have been asked to talk about the history of the church, given that it's the anniversary. And, uh, this church was opened up on the 10th of October, 3pm uh, in the afternoon, or Saturday afternoon, uh, in 1998. That's 21 years ago. And on that day, as we opened the church up, the first thing we did was to read a prayer from Silver Birch. For those of you who are new, there are many, many books on the philosophy of Silver Birch, but let me just say that Silver Birch is the guiding spirit that uh, spoke through Maurice Barbonell, who uh, was a man of letters and uh, wrote articles in newspapers in the UK. And the story goes that he walked into a spiritualist meeting one day and began to speak. And when he stopped speaking, he sort of woke up and apologised to people for having fallen asleep. And the people around him said, you haven't been asleep. You've been saying some wonderful, wonderful philosophy. And from that flowed the philosophy of Silver Birch. Silver Birch is a spirit, a guiding spirit. And in his books you will read uh, prayers that give you an idea of his approach to what this thing we call God is all about. So we read this out on that first day. The first thing that was done was to read his prayer out. And it says, O great spirit, we approach you, the fountainhead of all life, seeking to establish a closer union with the power that has fashioned all of us in its own divine image and which holds all of humanity 
in its embrace of love. All of humanity in its embrace of love. We recognise that thou art the great spirit we call God, and because thou art infinite, we cannot comprehend all of thy majesty. Neither can we understand the fullness of thy supremacy. But we do recognise that throughout all the universe, in all its infinite manifestations, thy natural law reigns supreme, and that the whole of what is called visible and invisible is regulated by natural law which is unchanging, inflexible and inexorable. <coughs> Nothing happens by chance or by accident. All is due to the divine design which has made provision and regulates every facet of activity. We marvel at and pay tribute to the constancy of this law, which overlooks none and throughout all time continues ceaselessly to work according to the pattern which infinite intelligence has devised and infinite wisdom sustains. I'll end the quote there. Silver Birch. Read the prayers of Silver Birch and you'll get an idea of how God should be worshipped. Now, Silver Birch describes himself as a servant, a servant of the great spirit of the universe. Mm -hmm. I, in my own humble way, describe myself as a servant of spirit. And in, in that sense, a servant of God. It's not something that I thought I would be. In fact, in my 20s, when I was 20 years old, I gave up being a Christian and for 20 years I was in no man's land, basically. And it was this philosophy that brought me back, this philosophy, because this philosophy was able to prove itself to me in a way that I understood. That's probably another story. I don't want to go too deeply into that because otherwise I'll never get through what I have here in front of me. Uh, the church, of course, is much older than 1998. 1998 is when this building was opened up. The church goes back to 1976 um, the Victorian Spiritualist Union and the Tumberton Spiritual Centre. The Tumberton Spiritual Centre is up in Upway. And they are the people who taught me meditation and the people who opened me up originally. And I have a lot to thank them for. They organised a public meeting uh, of interested people in the spiritualist philosophy in this area. And it was held in the Springwood area, I'm not quite sure where, um, but because there was a lot of interest that had been shown about spiritualism. Um, and the public interest to that particular um, meeting was so strong that it prompted the VSU to bring in a new church in this area. And the new church began conducting spiritualist meetings, as I understand it. The date was October. October 1977. Um, so you're right about the 1977 date. It's quite right. The first president of the church was Mr. Richard Overall. And Mr. Overall remained president until 1979. And a list of presidents actually appears um, out uh, in the hallway there. It's interesting that the next president, as I've got, I've got was Mr. Max Gilbert. Now, Max Gilbert was the father-in-law of Buddy Gilbert. Some of you may have known her as Buddy Eldridge. Uh, quite a famous name in spiritual circles. No longer with us, unfortunately. Um, cancer took her uh, seven years ago. But I'm sure there are people here who remember Buddy. Um, So this new, this new church became known as the Victorian, Victorian <coughs> Spiritualist Union Ringwood East Branch Church. And to my knowledge, the first meetings of this new church were held in the local scout hall behind the elderly citizen centre across the road. Um, over the years, the church had a number of locations, but the most stable one was actually the elderly citizen centre itself. So if you go directly across the railway line, you see Lawrence Grove, you walk up about 50 or 60 metres, there's the elderly citizen centre. And indeed, that's where the church was located when I first started coming here, about 1988. Um, my then wife used to have had an interest in this philosophy. I didn't. I thought it was a very strange place. 
I used to come along every now and then, once every couple of months, just to keep her happy. And uh, I didn't change my opinion that the place is very strange. And being a technologist, which is what I am, I won't say some of the things that I said. The problem was that every now and then one of these uh, mediums would give me a reading. And uh, <clears throat> I have to tell you that that made me think for a little while. Um, I should, perhaps, some of the stuff's not written here, so I'll just take a little bit. Uh, it was Betty Boswell. I wonder how many of you remember Betty Boswell. She was the president, uh, 1984 to 1990. So when I first started coming here, Betty used to run uh, this church. Remembering the church then was just a Sunday afternoon. Uh, people used to get to the Lawrence Grove Hall at 2 o'clock, they'd open it up, put all the books out, set it all up. Um, then after the service, I'd have a cup of tea, shut the whole thing down and go home until next week. So nothing happened in between Sunday afternoons. So I got to know Betty Boswell a little bit, but uh, not very much. She was followed by Val Pearson, who I think was, I never came to the church when Val Pearson was the president because she was only here for a couple of months. And, uh, very quickly followed by a gentleman by the name of Joseph Crank. Now it's Joseph that I want to talk about. Because uh, Joe and his wife Hazel are no longer with us. I think Hazel's gone too. In his younger days during the Second World War, Joe uh, worked on radar. And you all know how important radar was uh, uh, during the Battle of Britain. And so he was an engineer, a technologist. So he's a technologist, an engineer, running a spiritualist church, and I'm thinking, uh, so, so I spoke to Joe, and um, in a sense, I was very, very pleased to, um, to come to the church then, because if a fellow like Joe could run a spiritualist church, I thought, well, surely there must be something in this. Now, it was about that time that I actually started meditation at the um, Tumbleton Spiritualist Centre. And trust me, if you want to open up your spiritual self to the universe, you can start meditating. Mm -hmm. And uh, things followed very, very quickly from there. Uh, once I started meditating, within six months, I got to the point where I was having some seriously deep experiences of spirit. And the problem with doing that, of course, is that if you look at the psychology books, they'll tell you that it's all in your head. Nothing's really happening. It's all in your head. You want it all to happen. So how do you sort that out? Yeah, well, the way I did it was to one day, one night, Friday night, I remember the night well, it was pouring rain outside, deeply connected to spirit, the, the love that comes through is phenomenal. I was crying. I was tears running down my eyes. Pure bliss. Yeah, absolutely pure bliss. I'm thinking, is this my own mind? creating this. So I knew I was connected to them. I said, listen, this could go on forever. I'll never believe you. No. Because I could always, always say that it's all in my head. How are we going to get around this? And I said, you better prove yourselves to me. You better prove yourselves to me. Find a way of doing that. And this is where things went a bit wrong. <laughs> right? Because I said to them, if you do that, I'll work for you. <laughs> I really should have defined what I meant by that. <laughs> yeah, this is what I mean by work for you. Well, make a long story short, they prove themselves through physical phenomena and a lot of other stuff that I got involved with. And uh, when the time came, I decided I'd better join this church and do something useful for it, because I did say I would work for them. So I, uh, came, I went to the, um, the librarian at the time, Christine Charlton and said to her, would you like an assistant? Remembering that, you know, you come in at two o'clock, the tables have to be set up. And in those days, I was, what, 44 years old, I still had muscles, I could lift tables with one hand. And she was very glad to have somebody put the tables up and help her with the books. That's how I began. Uh, within 15 months, I was the president. Now, you know, I can't help but feel that somehow they really did want me in the job. 
Because what followed from that, I'll tell you how it came about. Uh, in 1995, we had a new president come in. And that was a Mrs. Jackie Hardy. And she became ill. Nobody knew what the problem was. I found out later that she was basically having a nervous breakdown. The vice president was also the librarian, it was Christine. And the last thing she wanted to do was to stand up here and run the church. She just didn't want to do it. So she said to me, Dominic, you are now the vice president. Here's the keys to the church. Go and run the service. <laughs> oh, okay. So I've only been sort of working for Spirit a few months. So I ran the church basically for all of 1995. So virtually 12 months. Sadly, Mrs. Hardy, well, sadly, depending on how you look at it, they say you have to destroy things before you build them up again. Mrs. Harding and a group within the church tried to gain control of the church for themselves. Now you can imagine this move was strongly resisted by the VSU's Committee of Management, and the result was that the church was split in two. Uh, the vice president, that was me, was asked to become the president. I've been running the church for the year. In any case, some of the people in the congregation sort of got used to me which can be a bit of a problem sometimes, getting used to me. And they thought, well, why don't you just continue with him? And they communicated that to the president of the VSU. Well, time was uh, keenly tent. And so he rang me and said, Dominic, we'd like you to become president of the church. Unfortunately, and this is one of the, I won't linger on this too long because it's negative stuff. A legal dispute actually ensured over who had the right to occupy the Lawrence Grove Hall. And because the VSU is a spiritual organisation as well as a spiritualist organisation, what we did was to put, hold the thing. We had to get solicitors to do that. So everything was put in on hold for six months. So we had the use of the hall for six months. And the last thing we wanted to do was to continue this dispute. So we decided right there and then what we would do was leave the place. Because if the other mob thought that the church was actually the building, they were sadly mistaken. As far as I was concerned, the church is the people that go to it. So we shifted, and we shifted to the, uh, uh, the Ringwood Room, which was part of the Marinda Council Ringwood Library Complex. No longer exists because Eastland has been built over the top of all of that area. So the place I'm talking about has actually been demolished. But it was known as the Ringwood Room, and uh, it was our home for a number of years. And it was our home whilst we were trying to sort out where to go from there. One of the things I did, the first things I did, was to set up a proper committee structure. Uh, because before that, the church had never had a proper committee. They had what they called an ad hoc committee. And, uh, Reverend Kenley Ted, a man of vision, I have to say, said, we can't go on with this. We can't have our church being known from place to place. We need to find a home for it. And that's how, all this, that's how it started. We need a permanent home. Just what that meant, we didn't know. So I thought, well, if this is the way we're going, we need to put this church on a proper footing. And that means having a proper committee, holding proper meetings that are minuted and properly documented. Uh, so that's, oh, look at that, the first committee. <laughs> well, I was the president, the vice president, some of you might remember these names, Val Riley. Anybody remember Val? Her daughter was the treasurer, Wendy James. The librarian was Christine Charlton. She actually went off with the other group and within a month came back realising that she made a terrible error. And we welcomed her back with our open arms and said, yeah, go back and do your library job again. And let me tell you that when we cut the ribbon, which was here, the person who cut that ribbon was Christine. Because at that time she'd been librarian for 10 years. And she's the one who did the cutting. I've got a picture of that somewhere. The committee members were Michael Weiss, Thelma Milner, who was later to become Vice President, Phyllis Alkenden, 
and the Moraine Rain Operator. That was the first committee. Um, now, Reverend Henley Tett, who was the VSU president at the time, persuaded the committee of management to find a new home for the branch church, and a subcommittee was formed. And you'll find those names on a little plaque out, of, out in, the, in the hallway. Uh, Reverend Henley Tett, of course, Mr. Charlie Christina. It's a lovely, lovely, lovely person. I, I had the pleasure of seeing Charlie last week when I was at the VSU. Uh, I, a lovely person. Myself, of course, and Mr. Michael Weiss. So that was the, the four people. And the group was given authority to purchase or build suitable accommodation for the branch church, whatever that meant. So after much searching, and there was a lot of searching, I, myself... Thelma at the time, and a lot of other people spent a lot of time just going around looking at these properties for sale to see if they in any way were suitable to run a church from. Um, and what we did was actually, in the end, we got frustrated with it and we gave a local agent here the job of finding us a place. And he letterboxed in all these streets because he knew that we wanted to be near a railway station, near public transport. He letterboxed all the streets here. And one person and here we are. They had this very, very old ramshackle run-down home at the front of the block here, and they wanted to sell. And we thought about it for about two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> a block this size with an old ramshackle home that nobody wants, which is going to be torn down anyway. Yeah, this is the best possible outcome. I'm thinking to myself, okay, thank you. So Ken organised... He did all the legal work, basically. I remember, he's in town. I live just up, not far from here. Uh, you could walk to my house in 10 or 15 minutes from here. So I was local, and um, so I was able to uh, liaise with the council and, uh, and, and get, the, get things on the way. In fact, if you look around here, and this is the part that I was wondering whether I should mention at all because it sounds like Dominic big noting himself, but the fact of the matter are, everything you see around you is my design, including the chairs that you're sitting on. I actually went out and purchased those from a place up uh, near Burwood. I had to look at half a dozen places that made chairs before I saw them. They're called romance. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I like to say, I think the VSU, you see these red ones here, they know what they, what they use at the VSU, so they like them too. Um, but uh, you've got to understand, we started with an empty block. Well, what do you do? Who's going to sit down and say, what does a spiritualist church look like? So every time I went to some hall or somewhere, I would pace the hall out to see how big it was and get some sort of idea of size. The meditation room is actually based on the meditation room at Tumerton Spiritual Centre. I paced it and I thought, this room fits about 30 people. That's about right for a meditation room. We'll have that, thank you very much. So I made the floor plans, what the building shape should look like, um, and then had them drafted by a proper draftsman. Um, we issued tenders and uh, finally a, a group of people by the name of Brace Constructions won the contract. And they, they were wonderful people. You know, you hear a lot about builders. This fellow was switched on like you wouldn't believe. Really switched on. Uh, made alterations to the roof shape that you see this double angle roof is all he's doing. Those lead light windows up there were designed by me, but put together by a friend of mine, mm -hmm. Sean Curlis, who was here on the day that we opened up the building. Um, but we have stained glass windows. Who's going to design it? Okay, so I did it. The one on the on the left with the torch. Now that's my personal gift to the church. I paid for that. The one on the right, the VSU, the VSU committee paid for that. Uh, and Sean, being my good friend, let me tell you, and he was a lead light artist, apart from being a technologist, and I've been in training with him, Sean 
I was one of these people who could do anything. It's a brilliant mind. He could do anything. And he actually used, taught lead, light, lead lighting to his students. He had his own students and did some work for the Nunawading Council. I believe if you go to the Nunawading buildings, <coughs> some of his um, lead lighting is there. Wonderful fellow. Um, and you can see that he did some terrific work and charge us next to nothing, really. I think we paid $300 for each one of those. So really, next to nothing for what we got. And Sean, as I say, is a wonderful person. At the moment, he's, he's living up somewhere in, uh, in country Victoria. He has a house for, as a retreat for people who are going through cancer. Uh, yeah. He's that sort of fellow. A uh, nice person. And a really nice person to have things like that made by. Because he put his love into those. And the design of those, if that's the north facing wall, it was designed so that the light, which the sun would shine through them onto the congregation. And at the right time of the year, you'll get the light actually on the platform. Mm. That doesn't happen by accident. <laughs> Somebody actually thought about that. Okay. Uh, liaising with the, with the council. That was interesting. Um, I've got a bit more to say about that. Okay, I better move very quickly. Uh, that was the, yep, the committee also commissioned two portraits to be painted by the spirit artist Susan Rolfe. I'm sure some of you will remember Susan. She's a wonderful, wonderful artist, and because she was also uh, mediumistic, uh, she could do spirit art. From this platform, and some of the paintings that she did uh, of people, uh, we had uh, probably half a dozen occasions. People come up next week with a photo of this deceased person and we used to put it next to the uh, drawing that she had made. And this, see, the likeness is absolutely startling. That happened in really a half a dozen times. So Susan was a very, very good artist and uh, she was asked to do two portraits. One of Reverend Henley Tett and one of myself. And she was given freedom I didn't know anything, by the way, I didn't know anything about this. The committee kept this information from me because it was supposed to be a surprise. So one day they got Ken and me, took us out there and said, look what we've done for you. Um, because Ken did all the work, he had the vision, and without him this place would never have come to fruition. It would never be here. And I did all the groundwork, being the practical person. Um, that was my job. Uh, so there was the two of us. Now those portraits were, was, were hung in the foyer. That's where the, um, where the committee of the time uh, had them hung. Uh, so the people when they walked in would know that there was something significant about these two people. Uh, I haven't seen them for, for years. I don't know where they are. Um, well, perhaps you sh somebody should look at putting them back where they should be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, but uh, you know, just to respect that committee, as I say, they did that as a surprise. I had no idea what they were doing. Susan Rolfe herself was a, quite an artist, um, came to this church and was a little disappointed to see that her paintings weren't, weren't up there. Now, I did have something else to tell you about. Yes, I do. Imagine what it's like being a new president. Your church has just been split in two. You don't have a committee. You don't have anyone. You've got you with a set of keys. So I roll up on the first day, first afternoon, with two litres of milk, a couple of packets of biscuits. I'm thinking, how in heaven's name am I going to do this? I've got to set up the whole place, and it's just me. So as I'm setting the church up, in walks Phyllis Ockenden and Maureen Ock. They had milk, biscuits, scones, and Phyllis, who's now in spirit, came up to me and she's well. She said, Don't you worry about the kitchen, boyo. <laughs> we'll look after it for you. So I thought, okay, well, that's one problem gone. And Maureen, who was just starting in her mediumship at the time, says, If anybody ever cancels, you ring me. I'll look after that for you too. So my two biggest problems, 
uh, getting a medium quickly in case somebody cancels. That's fixed up. The kitchen is fixed up. And I know, and some of you know, that I've butted heads with Maureen Ockenden a number of times while she's been on the committee, but I'll never forget her. <coughs> Love, you know, what they did that day saved me a lot of trouble. And they were wonderful people. Uh, Maureen, of course, is still around, doing what Maureen does. But <laughs> nevertheless, I'll never forget her. The other thing that happened, which may be of interest, uh, is the pro planning proposal for the Marina Council. I received this letter from them saying, we need a pro planning proposal from you. I'm a technologist. What's a planning proposal? Now, I happened to mention this. And one of the ladies that used to come to the church, and she hadn't been for years. She happened to be there that day. She said, oh, I went for the Yarra Rangers Council. And um, um, how can I put this? She was about to... Uh, her boyfriend, I'll put it that way, <laughs> uh, was a, an executive in the Yarra Rangers Council, and his specialty was planning. He was in the planning department. So she said to me, I'll ask, I've forgotten what his name was, I'll ask him about this. And he rang me up and said, uh, tell me what the lot number is, what the address is, and uh, the Marina Council, yes. And two weeks later, he gave me a 20-page document. And he said to me, take that and give it to the Marina Council, and said, you'll never hear from them again about this matter. <laughs> <laughs> because it is exactly what they want. Every word is in their speak. In council speak. <laughs> they will never ask you a question again. And the 20 page, sure enough, some of them just said not applicable, not applicable, not applicable, but he had every heading imaginable and he'd filled in all the applicable. And wow, talk about somebody coming along, you know, just taking a big problem off your hands. That, that was really great. Uh, Marie Gibson, there's a library down there called Marie Gibson. Brilliant Marie Gibson Library. I should mention that because Marie Gibson was a wonderful worker for Spirit for many, many years. The people here, I'm sure, were uh, in her circle at odd times. Cancer got her as well. She was, I think, in mid 40s, was she? 47. 47. A lovely lady. A really big hearted lady. Her picture's up there on the back wall. Uh, have a look at it. Um, she had hundreds and hundreds of books, and I was privileged to see her two days before she passed. She wouldn't see anyone at that time because she didn't look too good. Uh, but she allowed me to come and sit by her bedside and talk to her. And what she wanted was that her books end up... She said, you're, you're building a church, I know, it's going to be a great church. I'd like my books to find a home so people can read them. There they are. So we did that for her. I should finish off, I think. I'll do that by saying that in 1993, I made a bargain with Spirit, as I said. In a moment of deep contact with my Spirit friends, I told them that if they would prove themselves to me, I would work for them. And I, as I say, I had no idea what they had planned for me. But Spirit gave me the proof I so badly needed, and also some truly wonderful spiritual experiences that really have defined my life ever since. Mm -hmm. They've defined the way I think, the way I approach people, the way I go through my everyday life. And I'm truly, and I mean this very sincerely, I'm truly grateful for the love and care they have lavished on me. And they have lavished love and care on me. They've looked after me really well. And uh, like Silverbirch, and I don't want to compare myself to Silverbirch, but in, in essence, in the same sort of manner, I feel very, very privileged to have been given the opportunity to serve. Because in the end, people who come here and run the place, who are in the kitchen, uh, on the committees, um, that's what they do, they serve spirit. And I'm really, really privileged be, to be one of them as well. Thank you. So isn't it lovely to find out that deep, rich history from a man who has walked through that history? Um, and so please join with me in thanking the Reverend Dominic Luttrell again. Thank you very much for being with us here today.
brings us here so that we can share this beautiful building and that we can hold this space and continue the work for spirit. So thank you, Dominic, for agreeing to do that. Much appreciated. So now it's time for me to welcome the Reverend Lorraine Latette to our platform to do our demonstrations for the afternoon. Please join with me in making her very, very well. Charlie would have to say 20 ages that he's handed over the desk, but unfortunately, we have the So, it'll happen. I know it will. Anyway, thank you everyone. And I haven't got a clue where I'm going yet, so we'll just take a minute. But um, I was aware as I was sitting there, who's the gentleman with the wonderful voice down here? Everyone's going, I thought it was just here. The voice is just here. Well, I've got a gentleman here, and he, he's come along in a sort of a, what I would call, you know, a, a vaudeville looking outfit. And I get the impression from this gentleman that he would have sung with a, a couple of other men. Anyone play someone like that or have in their life sung in a like with a couple of other men in some sort of a group together? Maybe just for fun even, you know, not you sure you can't play someone that could do like that? No, not Okay, we'll just see what because I feel as if I am with you. So and I'm sorry, what's your name again? Uh, uh, Doug. Sorry? Doug. Doug. Okay. All right. Well, this gentleman, he shows himself and he's got a, you know, like a black jacket on and a bow tie. So he would have been a man who liked to get dressed up when he went out. Not a really tall man, I don't think. Probably five foot nine, perhaps, five foot ten. Um, broader than you are, but not a big, big man. And I feel like he would have been fair in his younger years. Okay, and I want to go back a while but I feel like he's in a similar age group to you, okay? And he's showing me himself, I would think, probably around about his 70s, this man. And as I said, he gave me the, he was very interested in, in the singing, in being part of, of what was happening. So I want to give you the name of Jim has just come in here. It may not be his name, but can you place the name of Jim in the spirit world? Oh, hang on, I'm sorry. Yeah, oh, okay, okay. I'll just see what else we get here. And I don't know whether it's Edith or Ethel. Um, it's Edith or Ethel, an E name, short E name, maybe Edith or something like that. You might have to think about it a little bit. See if you can, um, if I get a name, I'll just give it to you. And, and you know, sometimes they come back later because they're not coming from where you expect it, you know. Now, this gentleman is, is still very much here, a very sort of happy man he was, very sociable sort of man, and liked, liked to have fun, yeah. liked to have fun. And, and I do want to go into some sort of group environment that you were in at some stage in your earlier life, where there would have been other blokes around, he's telling me. You can't, you can't think of it? Okay. So anyway, he, he's here today to be remembered, so hopefully you do remember him. Um, I don't feel like it's a work connection. It's more of a social connection. It's a social connection, I have to say to you. Some sort of group. I don't know whether you were ever part of um, like a community citizens group or something like that. Right? But just it's some sort of a group environment. So, um, Ted, I want to give you the name of Ted, comes in here as well. Now, with this, I, I've 
got another gentleman coming in and he's much taller, this man, quite a tall man. And um, he's got a very good head of hair on him and um, he sort of stands very upright. Um, and I feel like this, if it's not direct family, it's close to family contact with this gentleman. Okay, and I feel there was some sort of a heart condition that he would have had before he passed. I feel like he went rather suddenly when he went, and I would say he's probably in his late seventies, perhaps. But but he may have well looked younger than his years. Can you place the gentleman in that description? You can't place him off. It's hard when you. Well, they're both certainly coming here to be remembered today. Um, He's talking about, have you had some concern around your health condition a little while back there? Yeah? Okay, he's talking about that. And, and, he's, and we don't diagnose or get into that side of things, but he's telling me you're doing the right thing. Okay, if that makes you, if that makes you, um, if you understand that, yes. He tells me you're doing the right thing. Um, it's as if there was some hesitation about whether you really wanted to do whatever or some sort of hesitation here about um, about something yeah. but but you're doing the right thing but he says don't stop doing what you love yeah. 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 all right yeah. okay don't stop doing what you love yeah. and the little lady comes in and she's got some she's showing me the roses did you have roses in your garden at some stage? Some a lady around who loved working with roses. I have to go back to when you were much younger, I think, perhaps, with this lady. I want to go back to your mum's generation, I feel, here, with this, this with roses, because it's an old-fashioned garden. It's an old-fashioned garden. So can I leave there, love? Do love with you and, and hopefully you will recognise other two gentlemen. Okay. Now I don't know why I'm coming yet, but I need to come to the lady just in the middle there. Yes? Oh, hi. Hello. Hi. And can I have your name? Caroline. Caroline. Hello, Caroline. So are you happy for me to yeah. come to you today? Okay. <laughs> <coughs> oh, okay. I've got a lady here and she says to me, she doesn't think there's anyone who'd want to come and see her from our side. So, can you understand that? She's saying, oh, she doesn't really think I'd come here today. So, there's a lady in the spirit world who would have not really understood what, what we believe in, but she's certainly very much aware of this now. And I want to go back, perhaps, to your grandmother's generation here for this lady. Yeah. Okay, she's not a really big lady, but she's she's sort of fairly solid, this woman. Yeah. And she's got short hair as she comes in and shows me. And it's and it's grey, that steely grey sort of colour. Yeah. Um, she's got a lovely face. A lovely face. Very soft looking face. Can you place the lady of this description? I don't remember. I never had grandparents, but the, but I do know through someone um, that I know. I might know who <coughs> you're talking about. Okay. So if she's my not my mother's mother. Yes. So this would be grandmother. Yeah. I'm going to say she's she's a, um, I've, I wanted to go to your mother's side here with this. Yeah. This is how I feel. I feel like she was a very when I say a motherly woman, you know, not everyone's as motherly as other people are, you know. But this lady was was very motherly. And she went before her time, I feel, though. She went, well, you know, before her time. She was telling me there were, there were things. Was your mum fairly young when you and her mum passed? Um, I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite sure. Uh, okay. Yes, she was. Because <coughs> she's, she's talking about um, not being able to be there at some particular time in, in your mum's life right. that, that she would have wanted to be able to support her with. Okay. So I don't understand what that means, but you might um, understand that. 
Um, and there's a, a gentleman comes in here as well. And I want to go to a, um, it's, if it's not country, it's, it's sort of like, in those days, you know, here was the country, if you know what I mean. We're not way out in the country, but it's certainly not the city. Okay? And I think I'm on father's side of the family here. Oh, okay. With this gentleman. Okay. If that makes sense. And um, something about an orchard. Would you know of... of they live, they live um, in a cottage near an orchard. Oh, okay. Because he's talking about an orchard. Yes. So if you can place that, that's, that's good. So this is this gentleman comes in to be remembered as well. Oh. And and I have the name of Frank, which may not be his name, but the name of Frank comes in here. And and William. William. William, you yeah. may have to go looking back for that. Now I've had it as William, could have been known as Bill, of course. Okay. But but oh okay. He's showing me the name of William and I don't know if it's to do with him and I don't know. I get the feeling it's a second name though. The name is Crawford. Yeah, well, no. I, I don't know. I don't you don't know? know. I don't okay. know very little. Is someone looking at the history of things? They were. They were? Okay. They were. Well, that name, because I don't often get surnames, so that name I might not Because my mum was adopted. Oh, okay. And, they, and my the grandmother, she died of. Don't tell me too much. Sorry. I'm supposed to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to leave you for that name Thank you. Crawford as well. Thank you. But um, I feel like there are people in spirit that are watching out for you at this moment. Um, even though you know may not be aware of who they are, that, that this connection is very strong on the spirit side. You, your grandmother's telling me, and. Um, You've taken a bit of a different direction, she's talking about. Yeah. You've taken a different direction. And I want to go back a little while here for this. This isn't a recent thing. This isn't recent. This is probably about five years ago. She's talking about five years ago. It's as if you... Um, these are my words. I'm trying to work out how to put it. It's as if suddenly you saw things differently. Yes. If that makes sense. Yes. And she's very much aware of that and, and um, very proud of that, very proud of that because it's, um, it's as if she's saying the significance of that is still yet to come. I don't understand it, but it's not for me to understand. So can you hold those, those thoughts because it's important. She wants you to, to recognise that the significance of that is still yet to come. Can I leave that with yeah. you? Thank you. Can I come to the lady there with the beautiful black hair? Can yeah. I come to you, please? Yeah, yeah. And your name? Elisa. Sorry. Elisa. 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 As I come to you, I need to give you, it's another E name, the name of Elizabeth comes in here around you. The name of Elizabeth. Now I don't know whether this is in spirit or living. So if you can't place that name, can I ask you to hold it at the moment, the name of Elizabeth, because it's important. I don't know why yet, but it's important. I've got a gentleman here who's very, very thin, very slim and very tall, comes in here. And I want to go to your father's side of the family for this gentleman. And he would have been a man who worked very much with his hands. He's showing me he's got very lean, sort of muscular arms. Can you place a gentleman in the spirit world of that description? Something about his arms. They're very lean and... Um, and strong. He's very lean and strong. And I feel like I'm connected with another country here. I'm connected with another country, okay? Um, and I, I feel like there's some connection um, to do with mining. Does that make sense to you? Back, back in 
know, in the family to do with lining. Um, gems, gems, not, not coal or anything like that, but stones. I'm not sure. You're not sure, no. yeah. Well, this is what he's talking about. He's talking about this. And, and as he talks about it, he's showing me, he's showing me a stone and he's polishing it. He's polishing it. And he's telling me that this is what you're trying to do at the moment with yourself. As you're, as you're learning about something, you're trying to take a different direction with something, and, and you're learning and, and you're polishing. You're polishing yourself. And he's very, he's very proud of you for this because he says um, you have to start from a very raw material, if that makes sense to you. Like you didn't have the background education that you, that you may have, um, you missed out at some point, and I don't know why, but you will understand that. You missed out on, on something and now you're trying to, to, re, to rediscover it, rebuild it, and you're doing this beautiful polishing. And, um, and, and then he shows me this beautiful um, shining stone, you know, it's a diamond or something like that. And this is a symbolic thing. He's talking to you in, in, in this sort of symbology because he says, and, and it's beautiful, his words, he says, you are a diamond, but, but you can't see beyond the raw material. All right, so he wants to remind you of that. And, and um, have you got younger children around you in something that you do? <coughs> yeah. Because yeah. mm -hmm. he's talking about the children mm -hmm. and how you, um, how you lift their, their um, energy and lift their um, enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. um, and it's so important, you know, because they are the same. There's so much talent there. And you can see the talent beyond, beyond what everyone else sees. Yeah. And he, he congratulates you for that and wants you to, to keep, up, keep up this work because it's so important. It's so important. And the, as a lady comes in as well to be remembered here, and I feel like she's your, a grandmother feeling I have with this lady. Mm -hmm. And she has, just as you've got beautiful colours on, she has beautiful colours on. And, and she's got oranges and yellows, and um, it's some sort of a, um, it's like a, a, um, a costume that represented her, I want to say clan or family, something like that. I don't know if you know about that, you might be able to find out about that. But it's a, it's a costume um, that represents something, you know, to do with her culture. And, um, She's showing me a, a, like a river, so I feel like, you know, she, where, where they lived was near a river, if that makes sense to you, if you can accept that. Yeah. Can I leave their love with you? Um, as a, a, the, an A name, I can't say it, it's, it starts with A, it's a, a, a long name. Um, I, I'm not even going to try, you know, because I'll spoil it, but I feel like it's a gentleman's name, it starts with an A. If I can leave that leave that with you, leave that with you. Thank you. How are we going? We can do another one if you like. Oh, well, you better have a go. Thank you very much. And that's called handing that over. <laughs> Thank you to Dominic and to the ladies of Belmar for being here today to make this such a special day. It really is a special day. And how are you all doing? Are you good? Yeah. Excellent. Okay. So I've been asking the spirits to step in, as we always do. We ask, we plead, we pray, we connect, we bring that energy to us. And then we say, where do you want us to read for? And this lady with the beautiful pink... Jacket, I was just so drawn to you. So can I come to you, please? Can I have your name? Kathy. Kathy. All right, well, welcome to Ringwood today, Kathy. 
lovely to meet you. I have a lady who is stepping in and making her presence known to me. She told me that she came on mother's side of the family. She was an elderly lady when she went to spirit. And I do believe she would be coming in like a mother vibration. That was that feeling that she came through with. She was a very small lady, so she wasn't very tall. She wasn't a really big lady on her build either. Um, I do feel that near the end, she was quite weak, quite frail, needed a lot of care. Um, she also indicated to me that she always was very much aware of her appearance. She liked her hair brushed nicely, she liked to look fresh, clean and neat. Near the end, she found it hard to keep that appearance, you know, the way she liked to be. Does this lady resonate to you? Like, she would be connected in through mother side of the family and she does come through with that energy of the mother, that feeling. Does that play, do you, can I place that? Yes? Thank you very much. Now, as she was coming in, she was telling me that there is either someone around you or it's with yourself, I'm not sure, because she wasn't clear on that, that has been a tad forgetful lately. So they've been forgetting things, forgetting to show up to things, forgetting to put things away, to pick things up, to do different things. Does this resonate to you? Have you noticed it? Yes? You can relate to that. Okay. Now, what she's saying is her little <coughs> trick was that she used to write everything down. She always wrote everything down. And then every day she made herself check it. She was having a laugh when she said that. She said, because, you know, as we get older, we can be forgetful, she said. So that was just one little thing she really liked to do. So could I give that to you as a piece of advice for yourself or whoever that fits with, okay? She also tells me she was, she was a quiet lady. She was quite a... A gentle lady she was quite loving and very embracing that's what she's telling me about her and she's saying that that's your type of personality too that you are quiet you are loving you are very open and you're very spiritual in your nature does that make sense to you yes. she's telling me to say that with work and with effort and with time and learning in the right way, in the right structure, you could make a very beautiful healer if you're not doing that already. But she does say that it takes, it's a big responsibility, and then it does take time to really get that connection to get to know your guides. So she wants you to be aware that you do have a beautiful team of spirit helpers who do work with you, and they are doing healing. And she would like to, to just make you aware of that. Can you accept that? Yes. And perhaps you might want to speak to someone to start to begin to open up that healing energy. And she says, you don't have to lay hands on. You don't have to do anything. You can be sitting in a bus stop and someone can look at you and you can smile and you can make their day if they're isolated and alone. You can have that, that gift of charism with that particular person. Could you accept that gift from her? Because she said that's what she'd like to give you. It's grace-filled and it's soul-filled. Can I leave this lady with you, please? Because she would like to be left with you and she would like to give you a little hug and a kiss. And from her heart to your heart, she loves you. Can I leave her there? Thank you. God bless. I was asked to come to the lady. You've got the sunnies on your head. Oh, yes. Yes. Can I come to you? Yes. Oh, give me your name. Uh, my name's Kate. Kate. How are you today, Kate? Good, I'm feeling the energy. Are you? Yes. Fantastic. Well, you just keep lifting that energy to help me make a really strong connection. Now, what I'd like to say to you is there was a gentleman who stepped in and he came in very close for you, okay? Now, this gentleman was a tall gentleman, so he actually had... You know, when, he, when I saw him, he had a bit of presence about him. And he was taking me back to when he was young, okay? Because that was the age and the time that he felt the best. And he says, and in spirit, we don't need to get old. We can present ourselves the way we want to be, okay? So he's taking me back to your childhood and he's presenting as a younger man. He had dark hair, okay? And with this dark hair, I do believe when he was younger, he would have done that and sort of combed it back and it would have been on the side part. That's how he feels, okay? Mm -hmm. He had broad shoulders. He's telling me, you know, when he stood strong and tall, he liked to think of himself as having a good physique, okay? So he was sort of strong and he had strong shoulders and a strong face, a strong personality, a strong character. 
does this gentleman resonate to you? Can you place this? Because as he talks to me, he then takes me forward in years to when he was an older man. And when he was an older man, he began to sort of hunch over a little bit more. He felt like he shrunk and he sort of lost that sense of presence he used to feel when he was younger. I do think he would have either had uh, uh, a walking aid that would have been like that, or at the very least he would have had a stick at different times to keep his balance. I want to say to you that if you want to place this man, he's making me aware of, um, not mothers, I'm so sorry, father's side of the family, okay? So he's connecting in to the father vibration. Does this gentleman resonate to you? No, he doesn't, but I don't know that much about okay. family bonds. All right, yeah. so he needs to be more clear. So let's get that information. Okay, so father's side of the family, and I do want to say that he's more like father's generation. So he would have been connected into father and he is family. I want to say to you that he feels like an uncle or an uncle that was married into the family. He wants to tell you that he smoked cigarettes. He wants to tell you that his passing came from a lung condition. He wants to tell you that he found it very hard to breathe and that's how he actually ended up passing. And I want to say to you that at some point he's catching my breath and I feel like there was a suffocus or there was some kind of cancerous condition that went into the lungs around that area. Does this help to place this gentleman? Well, I'm going to have to give him to you because he's here for you right now. He came in to be recognised. Is there anyone in your family that you can ask to perhaps get this gentleman placed? He feels like he would have been around you when you were a younger girl, when you were younger, I'll, going I'll, back. I'll accept it, but I can't okay. identify. All right. Maybe you could ask someone, okay? So as he steps in, he was talking to me about that sense of presence, that sense of throwing your shoulders back, taking on a new task, having the confidence to stand in your own power and being able to connect in, step out and try something new. Does this resonate to you in your life at this time? Yes. Yes. Because he's saying that this is why he is here with you today. He doesn't care if you don't know him. He is here because when you step forward, you will take on a whole different area of your life. It will change it in ways you can't even begin to understand. It is really positive. It is a positive, positive step forward. And he is asking you to take that deep breath, to step forward and to embrace it and to know that you have the strength to carry it forward and see it to its end. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Will you accept his message? Yes. And trust yourself. You have his backing. I also have a man who just stepped in and he used to play like musical <coughs> instruments. He was a very good singer and he used to be able to do a lot of things with music and different things like that. Does that resonate to you? No? So you've got, you haven't got a big connection to your family um, in that generation going back. So I want to say to you that there is a musical stream that runs through your family. I think it's to do more with classical. There's a gentleman who used to play like classical music, classical instruments, and he's stepping in as well. So if you hear that music, then you know that they are around you, okay? So can I leave them with you? And I'm so sorry you can't place. No, that's okay. That's Thank you. Okay. Um, I want to come over here. And your name is Amanda, isn't yes. it? Yeah, because you do healing here, don't you? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to ask, can I come to you and give you a reading? Yes, you can. Okay, fantastic. Now, I know Amanda's name and I do know of Amanda, but I don't know your history and I don't know your family, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. I have a lady who would have, in the end, had dementia. She would have, that, that's it, that, she just told me, straight up. She passed, and her condition of passing was dementia, okay? She's a small lady, and she would have had wavy hair. So her hair would have had a natural curl to it, okay? She is a skinny lady, so she was small stature, small skinny. I'm asking her to tell me where her connection comes in, and I want to say the word I heard was like aunt, or great aunt. 
So I want to come in. Does this make sense to you? She passed with dementia, bottom line. And she said, oh my goodness, near the end, did I lead them on a merry dance. <laughs> okay? Her personality changed. She became quite a handful to manage, right? And she wants to say today, to pass a message on, thank you. Even in my most unlovable moments, when I was being truly um, challenging, I appreciate and could understand on a soul level, okay, that it wasn't her, it was the illness, and that there was still so much love that was given to her. And she wants to say she knew it, and it helped her. It helped her so much with that very difficult situation. So can you pass that message on to her? On to the people who were involved in that care and that ongoing difficulties. Now, I also want to say to you that I've just been told that there is someone in your family, and I don't know who it is yet, who love to do the gardening, okay? So they were what you would call a green thumb, and they had vegetables. It wasn't just pretty flowers. They were very, very functional. Veggies and all of that, greenhouses and tomatoes and goodness knows what, yes? They could make anything grow out of season. They just had that knack. Can you understand this person? Thank you very much, because they just popped in. They thought they'd take the opportunity to just be remembered to you, okay? I also want to say that there is a lady who used to play the piano. And that was her thing. And you would have heard her playing that piano when you were very, very young. And she would have come to the house or whatever you would have gone to her house, sorry. And then she would have been playing that piano. Does that resonate to you? It does, thank you. So what we're doing here is we're having a party with your family, okay? Yeah. And they are all coming in and they understand the shortage of time, so they're just giving me key information so that you know who's popping in today to make their presence known to you and to tell you how much you are loved. And that is the message today. And the person, I, do, I don't get a chance to really unpick that for you and really give you that description, but what I do get is I get roses, and I get the old-fashioned roses that smell divine, right? And that rose has, is so open, and it is white, and it's got pink, and it is absolutely stunning, okay? And that rose has been given to you from the person in your family who loves to garden. And they're telling me that you like to garden as well. Yeah. So that rose will not be wasted on you. There's also a significance of a passing coming around. So it's like an anniversary or I do believe it might be a passing. And I want to say, yes, can you place that? Thank you very much. Because that anniversary of the passing, they just scream, hey, I'm here. And um, it's nice to be remembered, okay? So can I leave your family with you, you. at this moment with all their love and gratitude for you? Yeah? yeah? Fantastic. Do you have time to do another quick one? Do you think you're the boss? I'm the boss. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I say yes. <laughs> I'll do it very quickly. Okay, very quickly, very quickly, very quickly, very quickly. And now they're not jumping forward. Okay. I actually need to come to you. Is it Sandra? Oh, me? Yes. Oh, yeah. Can I come to you? Yeah. And again, I know your name, but I don't know your whole story, yeah. okay? So I'm just going to say to you that I have a gentleman here, okay? And he is a gentleman who is about six foot high. So that's his height. So he presented very quickly. He's about six foot. And again, he tells me that he has, he, at some stage in his life, he would have had some facial hair, okay? So he would have had a beard. Do you know who this gentleman is? Um, like, and... When he comes in, it's emotional. So there's a, sorry? Your husband. Your husband. Okay, that is awesome. He told me that when I said that, you would know straight away, okay? That's why I had to do one more. <laughs> You've been wanting to hear from him, okay. Well, I am so, so pleased that I can be that messenger for you today. Because as he steps in, there is an emotional well that is just pouring out of my heart to your heart. But it's not my heart, it's his heart, okay? Yeah. 
He wants you to know that your life is still a journey and it's still unfolding and that he is with you on that journey. He's just not physically there for you anymore. He also makes me aware of a photo, a picture of him. And I want to say that this picture uh, might even be by the bed or it's in the bedroom. There's something, oh, yeah. yes. And he, did he sort of flip that picture over, do you know? Like, yeah, have you ever... at one stage. Pardon? <laughs> he didn't fall at one Thank stage. you. <laughs> Thank you. Because that's his way of proving to you that he is still in the house that he is still around you and that he is still watching over you. Now, he was your protector, right? Yes. He had your back. Yes. He has your back. He is your protector and he is walking through life with you, but he's not with you all the time mm -hmm. because he has other things to do. <laughs> as much as you would like that, he can't do that. But he says, if you think I'm there, you think I'm there, you call his name, he's there, he will be there until you meet again. And he's the one, he tells you as he, as, as he stands right here, when your time comes, do not fear it, he will be there and he will guide you over and protect you and get you to where you need to be, okay? I also have to give you a dog. Is there significance? They, his family had a dog when I met them, little... Right. So the dog, the mother-in-law, the father-in-law, the family, they're all there when you, you know, they're all going to be there, they're all there for you, they're all surrounding you, they're all loving you, and they're all waiting for you, but not for a long time. <laughs> That's, so funny. Right? That's what he says, not for a long time, and just like that, okay? So you know that he loves you. You were his precious gift that he got in this lifetime, and he will never, ever forget the love, the loyalty, the support that you gave him. And he thanks you for that. So I'm going to leave him with you, okay? But he never leaves you, okay? So thank you for allowing that connection to come through and for me to be of service for you today. God bless, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> So, now it is the end of our service for today, and we are going to invite you to stay, obviously, because we have got a whole lot of food and a lot of celebrations to continue. But before we get to that, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to put your hands together and thank the Reverend Dominic Lestrade for coming in today. to understand Ringwood East's story. It was really fascinating and a real gift you gave, so thank you. And of course, the president of the entire organization, what an honor to have her here today, the Reverend Lorraine Latent. <laughs> and also, we have to thank Velma for her beautiful music. Please join me in the prayer for peace. As we expand the horizons of our heart, we join with many others in our world who seek to serve as emissaries of divine light. Our endeavours invoke the law of attraction, calling upon the angels of mercy to usher the love of the Creator into our troubled world. As the wings of love spread far and wide, we ask that all in need be lifted up and empowered to live happy and peaceful lives in harmony with the divine plan. We also ask for guidance from the highest spheres to be shown to the leaders of our world, thus giving them wisdom with which to understand universal law and love for each other. May peace prevail on earth, it may begin in the hearts and minds of each and every one of us. Thank you for being here today. Please stay and enjoy your afternoon. Thank you.